Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is another Java video. So today we're going to talk about uh, configuration management, more specifically build systems. And build systems um, matter more than ever right now because, you know, there is this ongoing discussion if we should be using microservices, if we should be using um, monolithic applications with monorepo. Uh, I personally believe we should be, you know, strike some balance and be on uh, the middle um, and basically still have services, but have this sort of a SOA services a bit more uh, fat, a bit more coarse grained. And inside of the services, I think we should have um, sort of a more projects there rather than one big project. So I still think we should have modules and therefore uh, you could actually have both, right? You could have services and a sort of a monorepo, but instead of have one big monolithic monorepo, you should uh, maybe have several monorepos, like maybe per business domain. Uh, and, and I think that might be an interesting approach, not explore it there. Um, I think there are cases where microservices really, really make sense uh, and they are isolated enough. If you think about maybe authentication, authorization, entitlements, um, you know, and specific services in your business uh, that are generic services that could exist in any business pretty much. Uh, but, you know, also uh, if we go into the other side, if you think about uh, some frameworks specific like Angular where you have several modules or even um, if you think about Spring uh, and all the extensions or Quarkus and all the extensions, uh, that things that it would make sense to have sort of a monorepos. Um, but, you know, sometimes um, it's also fine to decouple things, right? So really uh, there's no um, one size fits all, but I think it's possible to play, uh, also have some microservices, um, have uh, some monorepos, but I don't believe in just microservices and just monolith. I think both extremes will be uh, wrong. So today, uh, this will be the first video about uh, monorepos. There will be a second one. Today, I'm gonna talk a bit more about Bezo, which is the Google tool for uh, monorepos. So um, let's uh, get started with that. Um, so basically, um, if you go bezel.build, um, this is the solution made by Google. Uh, they claim to be fast and correct and have both, right? Um, so, so mainly, uh, Bezel is used by Dropbox, Google, Huawei, uh, Stripe. Um, you know, this was a Twitter project called Heron. Uh, this was this is the successor of um, um, a Storm project, which was built on, on Clojure. Uh, and also you can see uh, use case in link uh, in, in, in Pinterest, sorry. Um, so uh, I'm gonna show you guys how we can do sort of a monorepo uh, in Java using uh, Bazel. So um, let's get started. Bazel was uh, open sourced on 2015, as far as I remember. So we have five years of Bazel at this point. Bazel doesn't build just um, Java. Um, you, you can definitely build other projects like iOS, Android, C++, I believe uh, Python is also possible. So let's uh, get started and make uh, Bazel work with uh, Java. So I'm gonna open my console here um, and I have a POC I wanna show to you guys and we can start from there. So basically I have this project I call uh, Bazel Monorepo Java and um, I basically have three projects here um, to make it easier so we understand I have project A, project B, and project C. So these are three different uh, source codes. And in Bazel, uh, we need to work in two uh, files, workspace and build. Um, so let me open this. Um, let that actually uh, show you guys. So if we go uh, project A, for instance, let me do a tree here. Um, you're gonna see uh, I have a SRC main Java like uh, we would have in a Maven or, or Gradle project, right? So I have one uh, class here. Um, and th this class actually uses a uh, 30 part library from Guava to do some comparison. So that's project A. Um, I have a uh, project B. Um, in project B, I actually uh, don't have dependencies, but 
I built a very simple logger just to log things. Um, and then I have uh, project C and then project C, we actually have uh, tests as you can see using uh, JUnity. And we have sort of a lightweight application using project A and project B and orchestrating the whole thing. And, and that's what we are gonna take a look. So I'm gonna open an uh, idea, not, not idea, sorry, VS Code. Uh, actually uh, VS Code uh, support, um, you know, is a bit better at the moment. Uh, th there are plugins for idea, but they're not really um, stable or supported on the latest versions. Um, I open project C, so actually let me open on th um, the, the hood here so you can see all the files, right? So if we go to project A, like I said, um, I'm using Guava here. It's another library from uh, Google. I'm using um, these uh, ints, which has a compare uh, utility. So you, you pass to inter integers and the uh, induce and comparison. And then if there is the same, it will be returning zero. If one is smaller, minus one. If it's bigger, plus one. Uh, and that's uh, what's gonna happen. Um, in project B, um, is the custom logger I mentioned, all right? So I'm using a standard uh, Java library from util date, all right? So what, what we're gonna do is printing the current date time, uh, this character and whatever message you pass here. Um, and finally, uh, we have a uh, duplication on project C. So there's this app um, here where I'm importing uh, the compare utils from project A, the custom logger from project B, and also I have a method compare here where I'm calling compare utils from project A, doing some comparison between two and two, this should return uh, zero. And then on the main, uh, I'm instantiating the application and calling uh, the custom logger to log uh, passing the result of the compare method we have right here. Uh, there is a simple JUnit test I made here. Um, so as you can see here, I am J using JUnit uh, using at test um, and just looking, um, you know, compare will be comparing two and two. So this should return zero. And that's what we are doing here. So um, let's build this, right? So, um, Bazel needs uh, Java 8 uh, to run. So I'm setting my Java to be uh, Java 8 here. Um, and then um, what you do um, is base, Bazel uh, build. And then um, you need to pass a name of a project, right? So in my case, it will be project uh, C. So this will start a Bazel daemon. You will uh, fetch dependencies from the internet and and build all the projects so first time you will run this it actually will take a while because he will download a lot of things uh, from the internet however uh, the subsequent runs will be uh, really really fast right so as you can see here first time run it took 23 seconds was quite slow right but if we run it right now right we can see it takes less uh, then 0 0.1 seconds, right? So it's really, uh, really fast. So, so you have, you know, caching and uh, some interesting things going on here. Um, we, we can run this if we do Bazel um, run, right? And then uh, is uh, running. And also, as you can see here, the output, um, the, the current date time, and then uh, this character and result is zero as expected. Um, it's possible also to run tests. So you can do Bazel uh, tests. Um, and there is a target I created for tests. So I'm gonna run that. Um, and again, first time um, takes a bit of time, right? But uh, if, if we do it again, uh, you can see um, much, much uh, faster, right? Um, so let, let me um, show how we configure things here, actually, right? Um, so um, if we if we take a look, um, there is this uh, workspace file where basically, um, you know, we declare some things we want to do. Like, uh, for instance, we want to install some artifacts like uh, 
JUnity and, and Guava, right? And we also want to use these um, uh, Maven repositories. Uh, we want the fetch the source codes as well, right? So this um, really uh, doesn't matter much, right? But this is how uh, we are loading some Bazel uh, definitions, right? Uh, and where we are getting that uh, definitions from, right? Um, so uh, doesn't matter much for you. Uh, but what really matters is this build file, right? This is where um, you're gonna actually define your building. So you can see there's syntax highlighting because I have a VS Code plugin uh, to do that. So first thing you need to do, you need to load some rules, all right? And basically uh, we want to load rules for Java uh, and in, in Java, we want some specific rules. Um, this is similar to Ant, Ant had tasks, right? So it really reminds me Ant, but uh, without XML. Um, so you have like a Java binary, Java library, and Java tests. So Java uh, library, you use when you want to build a jar. Uh, Java tests when to, you want to run test suites. And Java binary when you want to make an executable jar where you're going to call main, for instance, uh, main class. Uh, then uh, package visibility by default uh, is public. And here we define our project. So first project we define is project A. So I concatenate with uh, Java Maven lib. So we know what project A is, but uh, I could name it whatever I want, right? I name it this way. So uh, then we know uh, what, what this artifact is. Then you need to define the source folds, right? So I wanna, do, I wanna use this glob uh, function. And then I want to say, okay, so in project A, uh, you go to SRC, main, Java, com GitHub, Diego Pacheco, project A, and then you look for all uh, Java files. And um, in sense of dependencies, um, there is this at Maven, right? Uh, and then you can uh, pass uh, um, a Java uh, dependency from Maven, for instance. So uh, as you can see here, um, com... Uh, Google Guava is in Maven what we call um, the, 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 the group ID, right? And uh, Guava is the artifact ID. And instead of using columns or dots, we use underscore. Uh, that's, that's what we do here. So that's how we define the first um, thing we want to build with project A. For project B, um, so, so uh, it's very similar, right? So I name it project B. I don't have dependencies. So I just had to point to project B search folder and that's it. Then I'm defining project C um, and I'm doing uh, exactly the same thing, but now project C needs to depend on project A and B. So uh, you can do that by, this is very similar to Gradle, right? So use a column uh, and then you put the name of the project and this name needs to match with uh, this name here and here. And that's what we're doing for project A and project B. Then for project C, um, we also want to have an uh, executable jar. Then you need to build this Java binary. So I'm calling just project C um, for short, right? And I'm saying, okay, so this is where the main class is. And here are all runtime dependencies. So I'm saying I need project A, I need project B, I need project C. So, so uh, keep in mind here is runtime dependency instead of depths. And finally, the tests, right? So um, for the tests, uh, we basically came here uh, and we, we, we give the name of the projects, all right? So in, in my case, it's tests. Um, and then we say, okay, so here are the tests. They're actually in project C, in SRC test. Um, th this is the, the test class or the test suite I want to run. And in here are dependencies, right? So I depend on project ABC and also I depend in JUnit and um, Guava. And, and that's it, right? That's 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 the the basal working with the mono repo. Um, I also made some readme here, um, so you know uh, you can um, run things um, there, and um, it's the comments I run, so you have it here if you don't uh, remember. Um, basal will generate these um, folders, uh, basal bin, basal out. Uh, basal test logs where you're gonna have the the results of uh, uh, your tests here right um, and, and that's what we got here um, and also 
Basil will create this uh, Basil and the name of your project. So my project is named Basil Monorepo Java, and that's why uh, we have it here, right? And uh, it will uh, generate uh, also, um, you know, some other artifacts um, for the building, etc. Right? So that's that's what we uh, got here. So that's what I got for uh, today. I hope you guys like it. See you next time. Uh, cheers.